In this video series, I will show you step by step how I created the metal pendant you see spinning here and laid with jade stones. In our opening chapter, we will create the low polygon model of the pendant using splines, FFD deformers, and the extrude modifier in 3ds Max 2015. Next, we will use ZBrush4R7's new Keep Groups feature in the Z Remesher tool to beautifully retopologize our pendant. So here's one of the high poly models of the shape that you saw a second ago on the turntable that we're gonna be creating. You can see here we have some kind of dynamic shapes that go around here and twirl around one another. And otherwise it's mostly kind of a circular base here. And then of course we have our uh, gems that sit in the center here. So I'm just gonna go to our front view. I'm gonna hide this, which I have on a high layer. I'm go to my default layer. I'm gonna press G so I can see my wireframe. And just come in here and uh, cylinder. I'm gonna click on snaps toggle, which I have set to grid points. And I'm just going to create a circle here or a cylinder. I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm gonna press F3 to go to wireframe mode. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this kind of as a tracing guide for the shapes that we're gonna create with splines. I'm gonna make another piece that's a little bit lower here. This one will actually be uniformly scaled down as well as uh, kind of like a more of an oval shape because I want this to get smaller as it comes down towards the bottom. So I'm gonna turn off our grid in the background pressing G. Now I'm going to shapes and line and now I'm just going to start uh, building out our shape that we have here. So actually I'm going to unhide the grid because it'll help me with some of my guidelines here. And it'll be kind of hard to visualize what I'm creating at the moment, but you'll see uh, a little bit later very clearly what I'm doing. Close spline, yes. And then we're going to go here to the modifier panel, or sorry, the modify section of our piece. And then we're selecting all of our vertexes. And then we're going to right click and say smooth. And this kind of smooths out everything around itself. And we have something kind of funny going on there. Um, and then I'm going to select basically our root points here and say corner. That makes them sharp. And I'm going to right click again and go Bezier corner. So the difference between all these little Bezier settings is that um, uh, Bezier corner allows you to move like this independently of itself. If I was to change this, right click to just Bezier, then what that does is that anchors off each other. It moves uniformly. And then if you right click and you do corner, it's just very sharp, doesn't even give you a selection. And then smooth, kind of smooths out like we saw a minute ago. So uh, for these endpoints, we're gonna use the Bezier corner so that we can keep one part sharp. I don't know why this is happening, just kind of a graphics card issue there. Um, and then the other thing too that I wanna show you guys is how you can move these control points. So right now I have it set to X and Y, but if you click on each of these, you can isolate it to just one section or another like uh, Y or in this case, um, X. But for the most part, I'm using um, X and Y. Now all I'm gonna do is just kind of go through and start making my shape. Uh, for these others that are right here that are at smooth, we're gonna make those bezier. So this will allow us to make sure that we retain uh, this nice kind of smooth section. If these were bezier corners, it'd be more likely that we wouldn't be able to uh, keep the end result of this super smooth. This just kind of helps keeps things flowing nicely. So I'm gonna move down just a little bit here. And this guy I'm gonna move way down here. Because I think we can do some slight adjustments on this one. The bottom one needs to come to a point. So let's turn off our wireframe. And it's looking pretty good. This bottom section looks like it could use some work. And also too, I wanna to make sure that the top is much bigger than the smaller bottom part. So. We're gonna thicken up a few of these. And then taper it as it comes down here. That feels about right. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do too, just to make sure that all my shapes are exact, this original thing that we're using to kind of follow the shape, I'm just gonna move this on the inside. This curve is following pretty nicely, so I'm happy with that. This one, I think I'm going to scale this down just a bit. 
and refine our edge here just a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to follow that kind of oval shape that we have here. This can come out a little further. So yeah, these are just really nice tracing guidelines so that we can make sure things run through here quite nicely. Now I'm going to right click and hide unselected. And now we have just the curve. But to me, this feels pretty good. We could probably refine it a little bit more, but I don't think that's necessary right now. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to actually extrude this. So come down here to your modifier panel and click the extrude. And by default, it's at zero. So if we're rotating around this, you can tell nothing's happening. But if you turn this up, then you can see we start to get some thickness. So basically, I'm just going to make this amount um, considering and assuming that the top thickness is exactly what we want. So up here it's all you know the same size right now but let's go ahead and right click co collapse to and let's center the pivot point on this and then now let's give it an FFD box on top and we'll go through here and select these control points and do some non-uniform scaling so that the bottom here starts to get smaller. So I'm using this just purely for scaling down the overall proportions. I'm not going to use it for actually moving because it does some distortion on other uh, areas of the mesh that I don't want to mess around with. So this is just purely to kind of get the size down. We'll press F3 so we can see our viewport. This is looking uh, pretty good. Let's maybe go a little bit smaller. Okay, I think that's going to work pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and collapse that down. Right click, collapse all. Yes. And the next thing we're going to do is um, eventually we're going to mirror this. You remember that other piece, right? And it kind of intertwines around the other piece. If we were to mirror this right now, it would just penetrate with itself. So now we need to, well, I'm going to switch this to edit poly first. Now we need to actually move the bottom out a bit. So if we mirror this, it's not going to intersect. So what I'm going to do is select a good majority of these vertices. I'm going to use soft selection here and let's crank that up quite a bit. I don't want it to go all the way to the top because basically I don't want to affect this section right here. I want that to remain where it is. Maybe I'm going to grab just a few more of these. We'll kind of slowly work our way down here. This will just be kind of like a gradual tapering off. I'm just holding down on the Alt key as I drag and move around these. This isn't going to be like a perfect curve. I'm not too worried about that right now. If this was maybe like a production asset for a professional pipeline, I'd be a little more concerned about it. We can even twist these around just a bit. So that it gets a nice little shape there. Honestly, I think we're going to need to go a bit more aggressive on this. Yeah, maybe something like this. And this just takes a little time. You just got to play with it a little bit here and there until you get something that works.
maybe we'll even have this little bottom section here kind of turn back in on itself a little bit. I think that could be kind of a cool touch. All right, let's see what this looks like if we end up mirroring this. And you know what, let's pull these uh, top vertices over just a bit more. Turn this soft selection down. So now what I'm going to take a look at is if we come up here and we use our mirror tool. Basically I'm going to just change this to uh, ZX and then I'm going to say copy. Let's try a few things here. Okay, XY. That's the one that we want. So now we say okay. And the, the problem here that uh, you know I didn't set my pivot point in the center so that's why I'm kind of having to move this around. If you were to set your pivot point right here you wouldn't have had to move that. So let's take a look. We got lots of clearance here, so that's good. Uh, we probably could have even done this a little bit less aggressive, but for the sake of moving on, I'm just gonna continue with this. So let's go ahead and delete the um, interior face that we have right here. Uh, I'm gonna turn off soft selection F2 so we can see that polygon. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld this to this other piece. We don't want to have a polygon on the center. So let's say attach. And then we're just going to go to vertex mode here. Turn off soft selection. And then we're going to go to weld. And I'm just going to increase this until you see it kind of close. And now it should be welded together. So if we go to our border mode and we try and select, if we can't select anything, that means that everything is welded together. So this is exactly what we want. Well, exactly what we want minus one thing here. At the bottom, basically what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer some of these edges where it gets very small. This is going to help us out in uh, ZBrush to keep some uh, clean topology. So let's grab these guys and let's chamfer them a bit. I'm going to hide this modifier list because it's kind of getting in the way here. Just come down here, chamfer, and this will help us out. Um, which you'll see in a few. So now we're ready to send this over to ZBrush. So let's go ahead and just uh, export that. Export selected. And uh, we'll call this to ZBrush underscore A. Save. And then this is the settings I usually use. Make sure your preset's set to ZBrush. And I usually don't have export materials on. So let's just export this. And we're done. So let's hop over to ZBrush. Okay, in ZBrush, we're just going to import that object that we just created. Drag that into the scene, press T to make this editable. Um, Shift F to show the wireframe, and this way we can see the groups. Right now, it's just one poly group. So, underneath the uh, tool panel over here, expand poly groups, and then group by normals. And then this is going to give us some nice different uh, groups on each of these different edges here. And that's something that we want to do because of a new and awesome feature within ZBrush 4R7. So underneath the ZR Remesher tool, what I want to show you is uh, this feature, Keep Groups. If you do this, what it's going to do, and for those of you who like to hard surface model, is it'll keep your edge that you've created that's separated between these groups and keep it at just a perfect edge and give you really good topology whenever you recreate your uh, mesh. So for example, let's just try this out, ZR Remesher. And uh, you'll see here along the edges, everything is pretty much flawless. Now let's undo that. Let's turn that off and let's run that again. And what you'll see here now, if we press Shift F, it starts to get a little strange around uh, the edges. You're starting to get some stuff overlapping and it's not as clean. Let's undo that. It's even more apparent if we do it at a much lower um, polygon level. So let's try it on here. So now you can see there's actually quite a bit of distortion right here. And for us, if we're hard surface modeling, we want to keep the topology flowing really perfectly along the edge. So let's undo that. Keep groups, turn that on, and then zero remesher. And then, of course, the nice perfect topology. This is an amazing feature. So let's go ahead and um, do this again. But one thing I want to show you too, because we have smooth groups on, See how um, it changed the shape of our piece? It's actually a happy accident for me, so let's try it and see our remesher. Um, I actually like this shape, but if you really wanted to keep the shape that you had here, 
you just turn the smooth groove feature to zero and now you run it and then you'll see it actually keeps your original shape so uh, just something good to know um, I'm gonna turn mine back up though so now I've got some nice topology to work with I'm actually gonna try and go just a bit lower see if this works out now this is really low topology but this will be perfect for what I need to do later and let's just do that one more time yep let's keep this one so one thing that you want to do whenever you're exporting this if you have all these different groups still on here when you export it so that it stays as one object by default it has this group feature turned on export subgroup just turn that off uh, and that way it'll export this all as one OBJ if you don't do that it'll bring them all in as separate OBJs so oh you know what one more thing that we're gonna do really quick is might as well just throw some UV maps on here so let's expand this out and close this Z plugin let's pull this over go to UV master down here click on poly groups because we want to retain these poly groups because these are already separated like this it'll separate each of these poly groups as different UV islands which is really nice for us we can turn off symmetry and then let's just say unwrap all and then if you do flatten we can see what that looks like so you can see that it's actually uh, nice and flat in here um, one thing for you guys if you haven't ever done this before um, this is kind of cool you can actually adjust your stuff in here so this works just like group mode so you can do like a shift alt click or sorry is that it yeah um, control shift click and then that isolates one of these and if you go to like a transform mode you can actually move these around and um, you can rotate them do all the things that you would normally do so uh, it works like an actual UV editor just, so just something to be aware of and then control shift click off this control shift click on any of these and you can isolate anything that you want to uh, so let's go ahead and unflatten this because if you send it back to ZBrush or Max that way <laughs> you'll just get these unflattened um, polys and then uh, now we just want to export this back to 3ds max and we'll call this one a